ang the best MS cat. May taga Quezon City, Sambuanga City. I'm also seeing participants from Barobo, Surigao, Surigao del Sur. Hello. Hello din po from Vigan, sir. And Holy Cross College of Kalinan, not RVM College of Cotabato, and NDRVMCC Cotabato City. Hello po sa inyo. And Dr. Philemon C. Aguilar, Memorial College of Las Piñas. Hello po. Good morning po. Sana po ay marami tayong malearn ngayon, of course. For sure na yan. Sa very exciting natin and very nice na ating topic for today, gaming and intellectual property. Cebu, DepEd Cebu City Division, hello po sa inyo. Don Honorio Ventura State University, Mampanga, hello din po. DepEd Caloocan, hello po sa inyo. So, sana po makita din po natin kayo mamaya, namin kayo mamaya. So, in behalf of um, Ms. Geraldine Gumalal, uh, the head of TLRC or Teaching and Learning Research Center of the University of the Philippines, Cebu. We welcome you all po sa ating webinar for today. So ito pong we webinar natin for today is organized by the Teaching and Learning Resource Center of Univer the University of the Philippines, Cebu. Of course, in cooperation with the Technology Transfer and Business Development Office na head po, kung saan po head si ati, ang ating speaker for today, si Sir Jason Si Sir Jason. So before we start, I hope ready na po tayong lahat. Um, we will uh, introduce to you some webinar reminders para po meron tayong mga rules na masunod, uh, dapat natin sundan within the webinar para po smooth flowing po yung webinar natin ngayon. So let me share my screen lang po. So yeah. So our webinar reminders So this web webinar will be recorded we will be keeping tab of the proceedings for this webinar for documentation purposes. So you are free to leave if you feel uncomfortable that this session will be recorded. So here are more webinar netiquettes to note. Mute your microphone during the talk. We want to make sure that the speaker's voice is clear to everyone. We may opt to remove you if you don't follow this request. Refrain from taking pictures or videos of the talk. If you do so, you will be held accountable of data privacy violations if the copy you created leaks into other internet outlets. We wish to keep the identity of our participants private, so as yours as well. And also avoid using the annotation tool because once the annotation tool is activated, you might unconsciously swerve your arrow towards a speaker's presentation and draw unnecessary lines that may block the participant's view on some texts and images on the slides. So this may cause distraction to the participants and to the speakers. If you Later, if you have questions while the talk is ongoing, you may put them in the chat box. So type lang po natin doon. After the talk, you will have the chance to ask your questions. We wish for you to only use the chat box rather than the voice because of our time constraints. Also, don't forget to evaluate po. Your inputs on the webinar will greatly help us improve our next webinars. Please do not forget to evaluate. And after you have answered the forms, you will be given a proof of participation. So the evaluation link will be opened right after the webinar and shall remain open for only 15 minutes. So the evaluation link will be given after the session. So we are also live, currently live streaming on our YouTube channel, TLRC UP Cebu. So for, 
For those watch, watching through YouTube, you will get your group of participation by staying until the end of the session. We will be announcing the instructions at the live chat, so please stay tuned. So here are our socials. If you want to get updated with the future webinar and trainings, or you simply want to get in touch with us, uh, you may like and follow us on our official Facebook page, Teaching and Learning Resource Center, University of the Philippines, Sabu. And you may also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Doon po natin mapapanood yung mga past webinars po namin. And for, also for this webinar, mapapanood nyo din po. You may review it also at the YouTube channel, TLRC UP Cebu. And you may visit our official website, tlrc.upcebu.edu.ph, or you may email us in, regarding inquiries or kung ano po um, maihahandog namin sa inyo, lrc.upcebu at up.edu.ph. So maraming salamat po and welcome po again sa ating webinar for today. Uh, to continue, and to introduce our speaker for the, today po, um, I will give the stage to Sir Michael Andrew Galorio. Sir Mike, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Ms. Morning. Noel. Thank good you, morning, Mr. our uh, resource speaker, Ms. Uh, Sir Jason. Good morning, po. And morning. good morning, everyone, for joining us today. Okay, so it's my honor to introduce our resource speaker this morning. So our resource speaker finishes undergraduate mathematics degree at the Mindanao State University Iligan Institute of Technology. A few months after graduation, he went to Cebu City to try his luck and had his first job writing business and financial stories for a knowledge process outsourcing company. It was here that he gained the appreciation of what the internet can offer and how systems can be made efficient. He then served as a faculty member of the University of the Philippines too. It was during his time in the university that he became appointed to head the Computing Services Unit, the office that would later become the ITC or the Information and Technology Center. It was also in UPC Bu where he became registered as a patent agent under the ITSO or the Information Technology Safety Officer Program along with becoming a technology transfer consultant of UPC Bu. He then went to the private sector to work as a data analyst for a business process outsourcing company handling information on workers' compensation. After that, he worked as a specialist for another KPO focusing on intellectual property rights. His return to UPC Boost started by being a consultant to the ITSO and then later became the project leader of the first ever national TBI summit under the UPC Boo in it. He formally became one of the administrative staff of the university in March 2019 under the Technology Transfer and Business Development Office. In addition to being a staff to the TTBDO, he also serves as the patent officer of the UPC Bu, managing the, the university's IP portfolio and helping various clients with the intellectual property concerns. He also manages the TBI facility of the UPC Bu, as it helps local startups to grow. His various expertise includes intellectual property, information technology, IP protection, and valuation of software and innovation. Everyone, let us give a virtual applause to Mr. Jason Nieva. Good morning, Sir Jazz. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Noel. Uh, morning, okay, sir. Naman ako para. okay, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, 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 so uh, thank you for that uh, introduction, uh, Michael. No? So, sige, let me uh, ipakancel ko muna kay Michael. Let me share my screen, uh, no, Michael. sound. Okay, so again, no, uh, good morning, everyone. So <clears throat> this, today's topic is uh, intellectual property and gaming. No, uh, In particular, uh, we're going to focus on uh, our video games and I'll, I'll give the rush in, in a bit. But before that, just a quick, I don't know, quick na Introduction. So I'm Jason Nieva, and I, as mentioned by Michael, I serve as the patent officer of the university. 
uh, helping innovation, uh, also in charge with innovation and helping startups. So uh, in terms of intellectual property, you can contact me through this email. Okay. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, usually you know, when I, I conduct uh, webinars or trainings on intellectual property, the, the usual approach is uh, we select a topic and then discuss the different uh, what do you call it? subtopics. No? So, for example, if you've attended the last two sessions during the first session I had with uh, this webinar series for TLRC, I discussed the uh, copyrights and then I went through some of the concepts of copyrights, gave examples, no? and then the next, uh, the, the next session was about trademarks and I did the same. So I discussed some of the concepts, uh, focusing of course on uh, Philippine law because that's the one that re that's relevant to us. Now for this <coughs> particular session, we're going to approach it differently in a sense that uh, I'm going to focus on a particular industry. And in this case, this is the video gaming industry. No? Uh, of course, there's going to be some technical terms, but as much, uh, as, much as possible, I tried to make it uh, listener friendly. So hindi masyadong maraming terms na hindi kayo familiar. No? And I'll try to explain some of the terms. But the objective here is for you to see, appreciate, and learn that for this particular industry, this is how they try to protect no, the different intellectual properties involved. So in your case, for example, uh, in the future, if you want to uh, learn more about intellectual property and how to protect it for your particular institution, you can always invite us to LRC and as mentioned here, it's so at UPC Bo. So for example, if you're from the academe, you want to learn how to protect your copyright, your research, then I can uh, customize no, a particular uh, webinar or training session for you. Uh, again, just contact me anytime. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's let's get a quick history no, of uh, gaming. And there's a lot of different thoughts on this, no, but I... I just got the snapshot just to give you an idea of where we are headed. And when you look at the history of gaming, <clears throat> the funny thing is it started with the Magnavox Odyssey, which is a console <clears throat> considered by many as one of the first home, I don't know, uh, home entertainment system. And then later move on to, I'm sure some of you are familiar with uh, the Atari. And then after that, uh, it, it evolved to Arcade, so this was the time uh, during the 70s, 80s, so we got the arcade games. So, so everybody that wanted to play games went out to malls or arcade, talaga na, specific, uh, specialized arcade uh, establishments. But somewhere along the way, for some reason, from the arcade, we went back to home gaming. So bumalik no, lumakas ulit yung home gaming. So this was the time na <clears throat> I think the Philippines sumikat so yung what we call as the family computer, no, or more formally known as the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. It is pumasok yung Sega, etc. Then from home gaming, uh, it evolved to online gaming, of course, <coughs> in the Philippines, as we now know, during the early 90s, particularly 1994, we, we started being connected to the internet, so nang simula na yung online gaming. Oops, oh, wait. And then eventually, right now, Sa mobile gaming. So again, no, uh, marami na, but this is again just a snapshot of what, what we'll see. And as you can <coughs> probably guess, <coughs> at each step of this uh, development or history, th there are a lot of innovations happening. And, and with those innovations come, of course, uh, intellectual property and their protection. No? So again, just to remind everyone, no, so why uh, the, the, this particular session uh, is going to focus on video games. Uh, so it's going to be for, for example, for if you're a game developer, hopefully this can help. And uh, for academes, no, like universities or colleges, teaching game game dev in your courses, in your IT courses. So this is, a, of course, for uh, non-gamers, hopefully you can appreciate no, how a particular industry again protects their IT. Now, when it comes to intellectual property rights in the Philippines, uh, we are governed by RA8293, uh, which is also the Intellectual Property Code. 
course there's there are corresponding ano na no uh, what do you call it na mga changes na <clears throat> and that's and then there's also the IRR implementing rules and regulations but basically uh, what happens is the the law IP code uh, enumerates the different types of IP so we have copyrights and related rights <clears throat> trademarks and service marks uh, geographic indications <clears throat> uh, ID patents and but for the purposes of our discussions not not all of these no are in a way relevant that that not that much relevant to the gaming industry so in our case uh, we're going to focus on copyright and related rights uh trademarks patents of course which i'm sure some of you will be surprised to learn no? and then uh, protection of undisclosed information so we're going to go over some concepts in this uh in terms of property rights and then uh give some examples no? uh let's start with uh, protection of undisclosed information because this is the easiest not to, to to see and it's not really involved in the games per se but more on the back end meaning on the on the company side which uh, protection and it, this is needed and of course being a company if, if you're running a startup whether it's uh, in video games or not this can also actually apply to you so this is also known as trade secrets uh, protection of undisclosed information and <clears throat> compared to the other intellectual property rights there's no need to file um, trade secrets because again it's a trade secret because you don't need to file it uh, for the other rights you have to file mangon um, the right and the difference is when you have to defend it it's going to be very difficult because it's a trade secret <clears throat> meaning may nakakuha ng secret so if your company A tapos yung trade secret mo nagamit ng company B you're going to file a case in court na oy that's that's our intellectual property as the one holding the trade secret ikaw ang magde-defend sa court na did you really do enough to protect that particular intellectual property diba so was the protection there to make sure that it's a secret so that's that's the difficulty now compare that to the other intellectual property rights let's say in, in copyright for example uh, usually or even trademark if there's infringement ikaw yung company A na may copyright or trademark yung company B yung like, infringe it's usually the company B that sometimes needs to defend bakit hindi sila infringe no? because there's a filing kasi to show na ikaw yung may ari no? right no? so that's that's the balance there so in trade secrets you don't need to file but if something happens it's difficult to defend uh, <clears throat> the most uh, famous example, of course, is uh, KFC. Their secret, no, eleven herbs and spices. So that's their trade secret. So they don't really give that away. But uh, we've had discussions now. But even if you know it, anong herbs in nila, let's say based on taste, you still don't know kasi the actual amount of the mixture. So that remains to be a trade secret. Uh, another example is WD forty. So hindi siya alam ko ano yung again the composition no? and <clears throat> as a matter of trivia lang yung minuto ka ba WD-40 no? kaya di ba anti-rust siya. So the WD, WD actually stands for water displacement and 40 uh, signifies the 40th attempt to make the formula work. So if if nag-work siya earlier then the name could have been for example WD-35 something like that. But going back to our uh, discussion today, in terms of uh, gaming companies in general, uh, the, the trade secrets or the information that they don't need to disclose include, for example, pricing. So how do you price your games? If I'm pricing my game at 300 pesos, uh, what, what are my criteria? So you, you have the right to not, not to tell people that. So if, for example, my game ka, kinenta mo ng 2,000, you have the right not to say how you came up with the price because that, that, that's that's going to reveal kasi to your opponents yeah, yung mga, mga, uh, parts in developing the game so you have you don't have to tell them uh, another thing that you need to keep 
uh, secret is the customer list or player base and this is what most online games do no na they 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 don't really give you the actual number ilan ba talaga yung subscribe sa kanila they always say mga estimates are like we have 3 million players we have 4 million players so they, they don't really do that because again <coughs> this is also for purposes of getting money from investors no? kasi pag ako investor kita ko eh I will see the actual uh, figures, but for an outsider, hindi na malalaman. So again, that's uh, that's what we call as uh, undisclosed information. And of course, if malalaman ng competition mo yung player base, then they'll know uh, how many talaga yung naglalaro ng game. Uh, it's also important to protect the in-house development tools, especially the software or tools that you've uh, develop no to make that particular game so pag may specific tayo din dapat tingnan din sa bigay so you you can patent or copyright that particular software but sometimes it's best na wag niyo lang talaga sabihin kung ano yung software na ginawa niyo okay the the, the the other people will say bakit ang ganda ng game mo because you're actually using a new kind of software that you, of course you have the right not to disclose but again if if someone was able to copy that particular tool, it's really, again, going to be difficult to defend that in court. Okay, so that's basically enough for <coughs> protection of undisclosed information. Now for copyright, uh, the basic is that <coughs> uh, you're protected from the moment of creation. So copyright is, so what, what this is a generalization, but what this is saying is that it has to be created. No? So, if, if you have an idea na nasa utak mo lang, you can't say na na-protect yan. But the, the fact na, let's say, you presented it in class or you wrote it down, then that that moment, of course, is protected. But again, there are some details no, that if you really want to have better protection, then there are mechanisms in place. But again, this that's not the that session for that. Uh, in general, the protection of copyright is lifetime of the creator plus 50 years. So, meaning, kung kailan namatay yung creator, plus 50. After that, once you exist, this term is done, we call that as the copyright is going to public domain. Meaning, everyone can use that without paying the original creator. No? So, for example, uh, no limit ang here, eh? you can make uh, new stories based on the characters without actually paying them because the knowledge itself is uh, public domain. Uh, for copyright, there are two types of rights and the first is moral rights. So <clears throat> this gives you the right to attach your name to a particular uh, copyright or particular work or on the opposite side of the coin, it also gives you the right not to attach your name to it. So let's say you're part of this team that's working on a particular video game, on a particular game. Somewhere along the way, simply, it's possible that there are, there are changes in the team or nag-iba yung may-ari ng company, nag-iba yung head, but somewhere along the way, medyo malayo na siya sa original na game na in-edition niya. So, by the time na lalabas siya, since you're one of the original developers that, that's still involved, then you have the, the right to tell them that I don't want my name to be put in the credits. No? So that's a moral right. Kasi tingin mo, hindi na talaga yan <coughs> yung vision mo, no? original. So you have the right to do that. So that, that, that's a moral right. But of course, you have the right also to have your name credited if you're part of it. And then there's what we call as economic rights, uh, which tells us that you have to be paid for your work. Yan lang yung basic no? so moral rights, economic rights. And Usually, the what what we want, no, in an ideal world, hopefully, and especially for you, no, listening, that you you want to have this uh, startup about developing games. What we want is when it comes to economic right, it has to be equitable, no, meaning, oh, ano yung contribution niya, yun din dapat niya babayaran sa kanya. So parang kanon, it, it will depend on. What, what the contribution was. Kung ano yung mas mabigat. So kung mas marami siya na trabaho, then most likely dapat mas mahal yung rights. So, but again, that's economic rights. So different siya from moral rights because even if you say na ayokong, I don't want my name to be included in, in the final product, 
you still have to be paid because you have an economic right. No? So, hindi mo ibig sabihin na just because you don't want your name to be part of it, hindi ka na babayaran. So, that's very important. Uh, in terms of works protected, the law actually has a lot of provisions. No? Ang dami niyang sinasabi. <coughs> and one of these, uh, and it's divided into two, which is original. So, in this case, my example is uh, this is a study in Scarlet by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. So again, no, ito yung first, I think ito yung first time na nagdumabas yung story. But knowing what we know previously, yung story na to, the copyright is now in public domain. Which means you can now make derivatives. <coughs> you can now make your own versions. No? So you have, for example, the Benedict Cumberbatch version. Then you also have the manga or the anime version. So that, that, that's okay kasi public domain na siya. And that's that's also going to be very important, especially when it comes to games. Kasi di ba, parang may story ka na nakita sa isang previous game, gusto mo siya magpatuloy, then you, you, then you check, is the copyright still there? Because if not, then pwede ka na mag-add sa story na yun. You can add your own versions. So that's going to be important. Kasi baka nang kaumamit ka ng story, eh, yung story na yung copyrighted na pala. So you'll be liable for copyright infringement. Again, no, copyright, the, the law, the IP code, lists a lot of things that can be copyrighted and things that cannot be copyrighted. And interestingly enough, one of the things is under section 172.1e, I always <coughs> give this example even in my copyright maintaining, and it's because uh, you're allowed to copyright dramatic or dramatic comedicals, and in particular choreographics, choreographic works, meaning you can, if it's unique enough, you can copyright dance moves. That's not what it's saying. And I, I included this because there's a really good example when it comes to uh, this particular uh, I copyright. So okay, I, hopefully, no, my sound. Uh, no, well, no, give me a thumbs up if you hear the sounds of it. Okay, lang, really, ba? Ah, okay. Okay, so this is actually you know, uh, the famous Carlton dance, I'll explain later, but basically it's the dance performed in this uh, TV show. And then, of course, it's no? especially in, the, in, in most countries that uh, show this particular series. So uh, it's, it's, it's really a well-known dance no? that even the first steps pa lang you do, people will immediately associate it with uh, the Carlton dance. So of course, there's a game that they, what they call is they use emotes, nila, and... So this is Fortnite. So, so they came up with an emote that pretty much uh, is obviously if you look at the country. So as you can see, you know, even without the music, you you you, you see the movements immediately. You know? You can sing, oh, this is a familiar dance step. This is the Carlton dance. And if you notice in the frame, this is this emote or this particular feature of the game is not is not free. You have to use uh, in-game money, no? in this case, like yung 800, 800 amount. So you have to, in order to buy it, and then you can use it now in the game. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, this is not the only thing that uh, Fortnite has done. Now, Fortnite has actually done a lot of these emotes. And another example is this, which they call as ride a pony. And I'm sure if you imagine riding a pony, then siguro no, alam mo kagad kung what, what dance they are referring to. So 
if you notice na no, it's it's a familiar dance step pero they they parang gamit nila is parang iba muna na background music. Let me go. Familiar na background music. But we'll see sa third. Okay, so if you notice, no, they, they named it initially the point of state on the other one. Now, I really is the only dance, no? and actually, uh, Fortnite was able to make what we call it most on a lot of different dances na made famous either as actual choreography or made famous through movies or TV shows. And of course, uh, there were a lot of back and forth, no? there were some, but it was uh, going back, so it was Alfonso Ribeiro. <coughs> who played as Carlton Bank or on the first Prince of Bel Air that actually filed a infringement suit no, against Fortnite for the dance. So if you can see in the photo, no, they are, medyo kuwa niya talaga yun. But again, as I mentioned earlier, at the moment of creation kasi, you, you have na the protection, di ba? But in order for it to have weight, dapat kasi may proof ka I mean, you can show proof naman sa previous series, but uh, mas better talaga if if they can see na you own the copyright. So in the case of uh, Mr. Ribeiro, nag-file talaga siya ng copyright. He attended to file a copyright. And actually, he filed a copyright for his dance, which is the Harvard dance, in the hopes that if ma-approve siya, then he can have a copyright infringement case against Fortnite. But when he filed the case, uh, of course, uh, the intellect, the U.S. <coughs> of patent office, no, the, under the copyright laws, said that the dance was not registrable and not because it was a movement, no, but because according to them, it was a simple routine. Meaning, for for the copyright office, it was not unique enough to say na para ba ano, but. I mean, we can argue diba, that it was unique enough that people will recognize it, but for the intellectual property office, uh, they said that it wasn't really that unique because it combined lang siya na parang basic dance steps. So that's the part. That's their judgment. So hindi niya nakuha yung copyright. And of course, it's going to be difficult to file a copyright infringement if it, it turns out na wala ka pala copyright. So in this particular copyright case, uh, one of the lessons learned is that so every time you you you're you're making a game no? or even if you're if you're putting out content you you'll try to find out is my content copyrightable can it be copyrighted yeah, yeah, you know, or not, your question and once you determine that it, if it that's it that it's indeed uh copyrightable then you have to file for the copyright and uh especially though know, uh in the gaming industry you know that technology is very advanced so you need to be updated in technological advances. And even as a content creator, you need to work fast uh, and you need to be proactive para alam mo kung ano sa content. So for example, uh, you, you, you have a song, gumawa ka ng song, in-upload mo sa YouTube. What, what's going to be your expectation? Di ba? Chances are, marami makakita ng song mo. Then they're going to make covers or they're going to make their own version tapos sila yung monetize. So meaning at the, at the start pa lang, hindi magkakarit ka sa song mo. No? You, you copyright it. Parang ganun. Para when the time comes, then you, you can uh, have an, an, and that's the beauty about uh, copyright no? because again, we go back to economic rights. So when we talk about copyright infringement kasi, it's always going to be about economy. Diba? Upload ka ng kanta, gumawa ka ng game, tapos may iba na ng benefit. So that's infringement. So usually, uh, there are questions na no, uh, what could have been done differently, especially in the case? So it's again, it's really difficult, but siguro, <coughs> how we see it is one possible way is that pwede siya na gumawa siya ng video of his dance, tapos that particular video yung final na niya ng copyright. So in that case, even if, for example, yung Fortnite, uh, this is only, of course, uh, this is hypothetical, but it's possible lang kasi na if Fortnite copies that dance move in their game, ni na pa ding ma basta basta ma show halimbawa to YouTube it's going to be hurtful to us, of course uh, gamers and streamers kasi siya ikaw yung may ari ng video na may dance tayo diba so ikaw yung original work meaning 
if they post something uh, similar that it's derivative work parang ganun. so that, that's what that's that could have been one of the ways and that's why i say be updated to technological advances try to find ways if you think i have a really unique dance step pero para hindi ko ma hindi ako sure if it's going to be uh, copyrighted then you find a way you know? and we'll go back to that in our next example uh, another example is uh, this uh, wrestler note. Uh, this is uh, Booker T. This is a WWE rest, former WWE wrestler. I think retired. So he 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 came up with this parang comic book uh, titled J. I. Bro and the Battle of Death. Tapos yun na <coughs> nagcommission siya ng artist na gumawa ng poster <coughs> for that particular property. Now it turns out there's a game called Call of Duty na gumawa siya ng uh, their own character, they call it as profit. No? So, uh, looking at it, you can see, you, you can get uh, both sides of the argument. No, na, pwede naman, medyo malayo naman. Pwede rin, of course, a fan ka ni King Booker, parang, oy, parang pareho yata. And of course, that's what, uh, that's what he did. No? He filed an infringement case against uh, the developer of Call of Duty, arguing that there was a copyright infringement. Kaya nakuha daw kasi yung itsura ng mukha, ng body, and even the facial expression. So, yan yung... Ano. So, we filed for copyright infringement arguing uh, likeness of the GA Bro character. But on the other side, uh, Blizzard, the one who developed the game, ang argument naman nila, it's, it's not you, no? it's actually from the neck down, it's, it's the rock. So, wala kasi yung proof. And then, they also said na when you claim, for example, the expression or the attitude is the same. That's not allowed. You cannot copyright kasi attitude. Eh. Yeah. Or expression. Hindi siya allowed for copyright. So, that's their argument. Na. You did not prove. Para bang, you said uh, we use the likeness but we did not prove na yan ba talaga? Kasi yung argument namin, sabi ng Blizzard is, this is actually the rock from the neck down. So, Parang and eventually, of course, uh, yeah, he lost the suit against, uh, I don't know, against the profit character. You know, it's sad for, for him. And, uh, if you think about it, though, what's even sadder about the situation is the case kasi niya, my, usually no, uh, in the US, means and court, na, but there are times na, especially if there's money involved, sometimes the court kumukuha siya ng jury. Para, kasi yung jury yung mga decide If it's an analog to si ang wrestler, then they're going to decide magkano yung babayaran sa kanya because of the infringement. Again, but, but in this case, he lost na kasi. But, uh, for me, no, what's even sadder is yung decision kasi ng jury, wala explanation na binigay. As in, paper lang na binigay, tapos nag-check lang sila. Yan lang. Question one. Did any of the defendants or no? So wala. Yun na sinabit nila, pinipunghan nila. Wala na. So no, that, that, that's that's a that's a really sad. So, sinabi lang ng jury na okay, it, they did not infringe. That was the case. So again, uh, going back, make sure that it is uh, copyrightable. Again, you file for for copyright, but this time we add what we call as you, you cover all the bases. No, and <clears throat> going back to the previous example, diba, yung dance the example. Let's say yun yah. You, you think this is a really unique choreography, so you can file a copyright for, for the choreography itself. But you're not sure really if it's approved. So what do you do? You cover all the bases. So again, you make a video that you ka regardless of your background, file a copyright for that particular video na showing your dance. Then maybe you can also para write some sort of manual on how to do the dance steps. No? So, Idodraw mo siya, <coughs> explain mo yung step, o ah, saan pupunta yung pa, etc. Then that particular instruction sheet or manual, pwede ka rin mag-file ng copyright. So, ang dami mong ways to protect your intellectual property. And in this case, copyright. So, ganyan din sa song. So, kung nabawa, song, i-protect mo yung song mo, yung, yung lyrics, yung melody, yung version sa yung na in-upload mo. So, may mga gano'n doon. So, so pwede, pwede nga, mag-copyright ka na with instruments, with acoustics. So, ang dami kaya. Of course, it's going to cost you, but there's going to be the balance kasi na I'm going to spend to protect for my IP. What's going to happen in the future? If, if may nag-infringe, 
diba? Is it going to be worth it defending this character or I, I'm trying to get there? So that's that's one of the lessons that we need to know, especially in the gaming industry where everything is so fast. No? Uh, still on copyright, uh, <coughs> Section 175 tells us that uh, no copyright shall be given to any procedure, system, method, operation, concept, principle, etc. So uh, we're focusing on the procedure system or method and meaning yung game mechanics. No? So the basic game mechanic cannot be copyrighted. Meaning how do you play a game? So for example, uh, in basketball, ano ba yung rules ng basketball? Uh, inbound, dribble or pass, dribble or pass, tapos shoot mo. Pag na shoot, inbound ng other team, similar at this. So you cannot copyright that steps. Though. So steps are games, hindi pwede. Ano ba yung mga so, sa patentero, halimbawa, you cannot copyright ang actual na ito yung step, ito masisimula yung team A, ito yung start ng team B. Okay? So you cannot copyright. So in the case of gaming, this is important because the basic game mechanic cannot be copyrighted. And one of the good examples is what we call as <coughs> the MOBA genre or the multiplayer online battle arena. Okay? So uh, of course, uh, in the Philippines, medyo malakas, isa sa mga malalakas before was Dota 2. And the mechanic was you start from your base and then you try to destroy the other team's base using different mechanics. So the basic gameplay, again, cannot be copyrighted, but the, the features, no, the differences, na, yun, pwede mo makapirate yun. How, how, how does this particular character move? This particular character attack, for example, defend. So yun, copyrighted. But the basic gameplay, which is you have your base, you destroy other base, hindi mo pwede na copyright. And that's why, for example, you have League of Legends. If you see, no, medyo pare-pareho yung map. Because again, the map itself is a game mechanic. And ito yung itsura na nito yung base mechanic. So you cannot copyright. But of course, you can make changes so that you're not infringing them on the original copyright. So kahit medyo... medyo <coughs> May, medyo may pagkakapareho, but again, there are, of course, some obvious differences that will make you say na, okay, <clears throat> in one glance at this map, alam mo kasi kaagad eh, di ba na, if you look at the map on the right, alam mo kaagad na, link of legend siya. So if you're a Dota 2 player, alam mo kaagad, oh, this is not Dota 2. So meaning, wala na, hindi ka na infringe kasi it's different enough. Okay. But in the case of League of Legends, it, it encountered a problem because there was this particular mobile game na parang nakuha talaga niya, no? And this was uh, Mobile Legends, which is owned by a uh, Chinese company, no? Uh, so if you notice earlier, di ba, sa map, if you look at the maps, medyo unique talaga siya. You can say, oh, pa unang tingin, so, ah, okay, iba talaga siya. But when you look at that too, yeah, parang, <coughs> of course, by removing the characters, but if you look at how it's it's arranged, pwede ka talaga ma-confuse. And that's the idea there of infringement. Kasi parang, pareho eh, parang di ba, may, may konti lang na minove, hindi talaga siya as glaring as compared to the previous na, na map. The, the, again, the game mechanic cannot be copyrighted, but as you notice, parang, you, you can argue kasi na, if, if you make similar, if you if pinareho mo yung icons nila, medyo hindi mo talaga malalaman kung alin yung <coughs> which game is League of Legends, which game is Mobile Legends. So parang ganun. No? And along the way, uh, as, as players uh, look at each the mobile version no? sa so, Mobile Legends, of course they saw some what what some uh, what they considered as medyo obvious talaga. For example, no, the this one, parang pareho talaga. No? <coughs> I wasn't able to get sa Dota kasi sa sayang. But you see na medyo pareho talaga. No? Of course, na iba lang kung ano. Again, you also have this. Na, again, even the parang yung stars, no? medyo pina, inano niya. Yung isa is one, two, may five lang siya na parang ring. Sa isa is four lang. So medyo na, nakuha talaga niya yung feel. Kung baga nakuha yun yung feel ng League of Legends. So League of Legends is owned by Riot Games and uh, Mobile Legends again is owned by Montu, but uh, it's now under Tencent, which is a Chinese company. So obviously, uh, Riot Games filed a copyright infringement case. 
So initially, they filed it at uh, California. So they filed a chapter infringement case. And in this case, uh, their case was dismissed and not because it, it didn't mean that uh, they did not have the copyright. So according to uh, the reason is uh, forum and uh, convenience, but generally it means that the court considered that this is not proper forum no, for, for this particular uh, copyright infringement. And the argument is since the, inf the alleged infringer is a Chinese company, then it will be better na siguro sa China ka mag-file. Because again, I, I forgot, I think I forgot to mention earlier, intellectual property is territorial. So usually, kung saan mo siya pinotect, doon lang siya effective. So if you have a right here in the Philippines, dito ka lang nag-file for protection, you're only protected in the Philippines. So in this case, what the court said is, we're not the proper forum kasi yung kalaban nyo is a Chinese company. I mean, at that time, wala pa kasi silang presence din sa US. So of course, they filed in China and a riot, the League of Legends won the case. So, <clears throat> so na, 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 sila, but what, what, it wasn't as satisfying no, as, as one would think. And that's because sa China, they only asked Monton to pay $2.9 million. No? So parang considering how big Mobile Legends has become, especially in Southeast Asia, $2.9 million is really small. So parang, so parang, yes, they won the case, but it wasn't the victory siguro that they wanted. It's only it lang na <coughs> binayad. So for Riot, what they did is, instead of going after uh, Mobile Legends, okay, diba? instead na sasayangin mo yung oras mo, na we want more, no? kasi infringe talaga kayo, there's the possibility kasi na while, while the case is ongoing, uh, Montoon, can make changes to the game na mawawala na yung copyright claim. So what did Riot do in this case? What they did was they made their own version, the mobile game version. So they had League of Legends, uh, Wild Rift, so nagkawa sila ng sarili ng version na mobile in the hopes of uh, beating out a mobile legends. And in fact, uh, in the gaming community, you know, there, there are now rumors going around. Even uh, Valve, which made Dota 2, they're trying to come up with also a uh, mobile version. And that's why there's also this kumbaga pa yung chismis na nun na that's why Mobile Legends now is telling some esports organizations na if, if you're going to make a team to play for mobile, hindi ka na pwede gumawa ng team to play for other games. So may mga gano'n na naman mga usapan. And this is <coughs> this was beneficial for Riot Games because at the time na they, they released this, Mobile Legends was starting to uh, find a way you know, to enter the North American market sa US. Kasi hindi ta, uh, when it comes to mobile games, hindi talaga siya ganun maka uh, appreciated sa North America. Especially if we talk about MOBA. It's not yet not much appreciated compared to, for example, sa Philippines, na laki ng market when it comes to mobile games. And the lessons is, again, you always have to file for copyright. So if you're a game development company, <coughs> file like, you know, copyright in order to protect your IP. But in the case of Riot Games, since nanalo sila, pero the judgment was small, <coughs> what they did was, they made their own IP. So meaning, gumawa sila na sariling game nila for the mobile. Since since uh, the game mechanic cannot be copyrighted, so why not make our own? So, I mean, it was better pa yung investment nila. So, they can now enter the mobile game market. So, mas na problema ngayon yung mobile legends kasi marami sa ng competition, especially sa South, uh, Southeast Asian na market. So, that's that's also one of the lessons now if you're a game developer na, na ginaya ka but different na platform siya, then maybe make your own na lang na version for that particular platform. So if your game is for personal computers, for desktop, tapos may parang <coughs> gumaya ng game mo for, let's say, PlayStation, pag hindi mo kayo banggain yun, then make your own version or make your game accessible to the PlayStation para your players, your player base, or other players will have no reason to go to that other game. Kasi sabi nila, ay, available naman pala to sa PlayStation or sa Xbox. Bakit ako Bakit pa ako pupunta sa 
bago ng game ato ito kilala na so ano no so make your own ip uh, another uh, interesting thing no uh, another example that i want to give is uh, among us so this is a relatively uh, this so ang game na to is the, the mechanic is that this is a social game no meaning you have to be online so lahat kayo na players multiplayer sa so online kay dapat so you're you're asked to repair so meron kasi isang area may i-repair kayo but one of you is eh, one, parang one of you is the killer so you're going to kill the other players but every time na may mamamatay parang magtatawa kayo ng meeting and then decide tingin niyo sino yung killer parang ganun so again that game that is a game mechanic that cannot be And among us, actually, is a relatively matagal na release, but gained prominence during the pandemic. Kasi nga, di ba, the lockdown meant people could not go out, so they were trying to find ways to have fun with friends and among us. But because sumikat siya, and the game mechanic, again, is uh, really that simple, we now see a lot of similar games, no? So we have. We now have, for example, first class trouble and then killer in the cabin. So, same mechanic but different presentation. Because again, you cannot uh, copyright a um, game mechanic, but, I, but you have now different versions and different features. And when we talk about this, I included this in the presentation because uh, the developer, you know, the, the the people who made among us, while there are indeed different versions that came out, well, that's the problem. Ah, shadows the new versions. But they had a problem with another game, and uh, and if you think, ano game kaya may problema nila? No? So actually, we've already mentioned that game. And if your guess is Fortnite, then you're again correct. <clears throat> so Fortnite, they didn't make a new game, but they integrated it into game. Uh, we call that in the gaming term as game mode. So, para sa different version, di ba para ano ba siya? Para Game mode lang siya na, ano ba yan? How do I explain? Kung sabi sa Candy Crush, di ba? Para meron kang time trial. You need to finish this particular stage na may one minute ka lang. Then this particular stage, you need to finish it in 20 moves. Parang ganyan. So ginawa siya na Fortnite as a mode. So of course, yung gumawa na among us, parang na ano sila, no? Kasi bakit hindi, bakit hindi na lang sila nila pinta? They were okay with new games, but as part of a big game na ginawa lang siya mode, wala na no so meaning wala na maglalaro ng game mo no? kasi people will ang Fortnite na players ah meron na parang similar version why would i go to among us no so the lesson here is if you're if you're going to develop a game if you're going to make a game na medyo the, the genre is starting to to become kumbaga sisisikat na yung genre you're going to have to offer new features no? Para you, you can differentiate yourself with the other games, especially with the new games. So you are going to have to consistently make new features para the, the, the players will continue <coughs> approaching you or playing your game. On the other hand, it, uh, you, you also need to consider competition from the bigger games. In this case, for example, uh, example is Fortnite. So Again, proactive ka, then you, you, you join them and hey, do you want to have some sort of collaboration? We want our game to be part of your game. Parang ganun, no? So at least you get something in return. Of course, there's the, there's the danger na hindi siya pa At least you, you try it. Okay? So meaning, by offering new features, you differentiate yourself from the new games. But by going for collab, at least yung mga older games and bigger games won't be able to uh, enter your own genre. So, protected pa rin yung copyright mo or yung property mo. Okay? So, that's basically ang sa uh, copyright. Okay. So, we're, we're now on the third, which is the trademark. Uh, trademark, again, ang dami nitong uh, mechanism, ang dami nga, nuts and, nuts and bolts, but at its core, it's a word, group of words, sign symbol that identifies and differentiates one particular product from another no so first jalebi and macdo etc so that's the goal if you look at one logo kapo <coughs> alam mo kaagad kung ano yung products nila similarly if you look at this logo alam mo kaagad kung ano yung products no so that's the idea that if, if you look at the logo and then na confuse ka then there's infringement na 
pumunta ka ng parang similar ng cup ko, pero hindi pa siya gaming. Diba? Ano ba siya? Nag-ibenta pa lang cups, parang ganun. So, that's going to be possible in Fitch. Okay? So, that, that's the idea of Kuroge. And again, in, in games, trademark is very important because it's a brand kasi. You have to be known for that game. So, meaning if I look at this particular brand, alam ko kaagad, di ba? So, if I mention, for example, Super Mario, immediately, mga pasok kagad sa isip mo, di ba? The, the Italian plumber, the jump, my power up, my one up, etc. So, that's the brand. Alam mo kaagad. Now, when I mention this particular game, you get an idea, ah, ito yun na game. Because that's that's what happened to that brand. They became famous. So, again, there are a lot of that na Ano. So that's why it's going to be difficult if ang, ang laki na ng genre. We don't know kasi yan. Kung ano na yung nilaro nila. Uh, one of the good examples uh, of trademark is the game called uh, <coughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. This, this, this is a Western game. So. Uh, first, uh, it's a game. So this is a Western game. And one of the characters in the game is what we call as Pinkerton's National Detective Agency. So in the game, there, there's a part na para mga kalaban mo sila. So para silang uh, based on the game, no? not based on the game, para silang bounty hunters or marshals. Para nga. So they're, they're hard to capture uh, criminals. And then so sa game kasi, one of the roles you play is para kang, you're a, technically you're a criminal in the wild west. So that's, that's the goal. Now, Pinkerton's, as it turns out, kasi Pinkerton's uh, National Detective Agency is actually a real agency. No? And <clears throat> over time, they, because ang uh, trademark kasi renewable siya, unlike copyright na nag like, end yung trademark kasi renewable siya every, sa Philippine law, for example, renewable siya every time. So yung Pinkerton uh, Detective Agency, they renewed their trademark until ito na yung uh, logo nila ngayon. No? So, of course, uh, when the game came out, when this came out, they, they filed a complaint na parang uh, they wanted a trade, uh, to file trademark infringement and also na they wanted parang licensing fees kasi nga daw parang nasira nila yung brand ng Pinkerton kasi iba yung pagkadipik <coughs> ng Pinkerton sa game compared sa actual na Pinkerton. So, nang file ng case... And of course, uh, ang, uh, the creator of uh, Red Dead Redemption, they also filed back. Sabi nila na while the trademark is there, uh, it's it cannot be it cannot really be ano, no, kind of enforced because for one, uh, Pinkerton, the Pinkerton National Detective Agency is part of U.S. history, no? and meaning. Although the trademark is there, but they part meaning you can now make your own parabang stories based on that. Kasi historical na sila na group. And in fact, uh, they even cited no, na some of some movies and even other games were using Pinkerton National Detective Agency. So para nag-counter so sila na, yes, you have the trademark, pero hindi siya enforceable because sikat na kayo eh. Diba? Everyone knows who you are. So meaning we can make our own. Parabang, you can claim parody siya. Mga and eventually, walang... Technically, wala tayo nangyari sa suit kasi Pinkerton dropped their suit and then, of course, uh, the makers of Red Dead Redemption also dropped their suit. So, we don't know if may mga behind the scene, but on the surface, they both ended their cases against each other. So, wala nangyari. But again, it shows na it's possible nung no, historical daw kasi siya, even if nandun pa yung trademark, parang wala ka na magagawa. Okay? So, Again, uh, of course, uh, if you're a small company, you have to conduct due diligence, especially, in, uh, for example, if, if you're going to make it, if you're going to base it something in the Philippines, then you have to conduct due diligence to see if ang trademark na yon is still enforced pa ba, no? If naandun pa ba siya, if active pa ba, and you, you should be prepared to enter into licensing agreement, especially if it's going to be a big Na, ano, it's going to be a big uh, company that you're trying to include in your game. It's, it, it depends really, but you have to be prepared. Na, okay, uh, I'm using this, pero it's a parody lang sa aking game, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm safe. But again, you have to be sure. Kasi if, if, if you have, if you're going to face a, a case later on, tapos ikaw, maliit ka lang ng game company, you're going to have a difficult time with that. No? 
So that's one of the things that we need to consider. Uh, of course, uh, one of the famous na, no, examples of trademark application is uh, Candy Crush. And wherein they actually managed to trademark the word candy for mobile games. And medyo, <coughs> some of you may think no, na parang counterintuitive siya kasi generic kami yung candy. But in their case kasi, di ba, there was a time na sumika talaga yung Candy Crush. And they were afraid that other apps or other games will try to exploit the word. For example, uh, you have Candy Casino slot machine. Baka yung player na nagsasearch na, na naglalaro ng Candy Crush, naghanap ng bagong game, nakita yung Candy Casino, it's possible that they think it's it's being made by the same company. Okay? So parang ganun ba? So they're trying to protect their brand. Ito yung Candy Crush, yung Candy Casino is different. So since they own the trademark, then they can file an infringement case against the other app. Kasi yung ano nga nila is, kinalala sila sa word na Candy Crush or Candy and baka ma-confuse yung uh, players mo, which is what actually trademark is all about. But eventually, uh, yeah, actually, surprisingly, they gave up their trademark name, Candy, because they were able to buy the company that made Candy Crusher. And then, mas nauna kasi yung Candy Crusher. So, ito na yung ginagamit nila na trademark. No? Na, <clears throat> to find other ways to prevent games no, na similar na name. But, again, remember, uh, in talk of property rights, is territorial. So, in the US, they remove the trademark, but the EU effective pa rin ang candy na trademark. So that's the, the differences. No? So if you attended the previous uh, training on trademark, no? so the word candy is actually generic. But again, it's still possible to trademark generic marks, but enforcement could be difficult. Then lang yun, eh. Kaya na, di ba, eh, generic is one of the weakest ways to trademark. But enforcement, but possible siya. Depending na rin talaga yun on how you would defend it. Because the, the process is, when you file a trademark, hindi kasi automatic sasabihin na intellectual property office na approve or disapprove. Uh, uh, pag hindi allowed, hindi yung sasabihin sabihin na your, your application has been disapproved. Bibigyan ka pa ng time to respond, no, to defend na bakit, bakit siya pwede i-approve para ka lang. So it's not automatic disapproval. You're going to be given time. To, to, to respond to that. But again, if you make a generic mark, it's going to be difficult to enforce. Okay, because trademark is territorial. Okay. So in this case, if you're going to release a game or if it any app for that matter, you have to identify uh, what is your target market. So of course, obvious naman, if, if I'm going to have a game, puunahin ko talaga yung Philippines. But after the Philippines, tingin ko ito na game, saan siya sisika talaga or saan ako makakuha ng <coughs> players na mabilis, mabilis makakuha ng players. So you have to do your research and let's say, oy, tingin ko this this game is can be enticing to players in Singapore, for example. Then you file for trademark in Singapore. So by the time you enter the market sa Singapore, protected na yung trademark mo. So you won't be afraid that, that ito yung mangyayari sa game. Okay? So again, it depends on what market you are. Uh, so, pwede rin na nag-start ka ng release sa ganito na country, hindi ka sure, tapos bigla siya sumikat, then once you notice that, file ka ka ng trademark. So, may mga ganun din. Depende rin sa this country. Uh, another example of trademark, uh, what we call as Dota Underlords, uh, if you're familiar with gaming, no, this is under the auto chess butler genre. So, when it was first filed, uh, a lot of people were expecting a different property because yun ka, uh, there was another company making uh, an auto butler at that time. Na they were not sure if they did it na a Valve, no, the one who created the, the Thunderbolts. But uh, what I'm getting at here is if you're looking, if you're a game uh, game developer or you're a gaming studio, you, you will try to look into your competition para makita mo kung ano yung ano nila. So in the case of not underlords, they actually had three filings. No? So if you notice, uh, I hope you can see, no? uh, under goods and services, 
it's stated as entertainment services, namely providing online games. So then they also filed a different trademark, but in a different class, we call it, and it's a downloadable game. So meaning in the first filing, Dota Underlord is some sort of company that's going to make games. In the second filing, it's a game, na, it's, a, in a, it's an actual game. But they actually had a an earlier file, so if you know, they, uh, an early, uh, filing then, same date, that uh, this was also for action figures. So meaning they were planning to have toys, siguro. No? But again, if you look at the lower portion, uh, there's what we call as the live dead indicator. You'll notice yung dalawa live, yung isa dead. Meaning, hindi nila tutuloy yung trademark na yan. So, what this is telling us is that wala na, wala na silang planong gawa ng action figures related to this particular game. So, hindi na nila plano yan. Whatever happened, uh, why that changed, we, we really don't know, but yan yung nangyari bali. No? So, hindi na nila plan. And then another example is uh, there was also this filing in March 2019. So this is from the game Diablo. And as, as you notice, it's, it says that the, the services or goods are downloadable films and movies. So para excite yung uh, fans no? and at that time. No? And a year later, it was, it was revealed that isa kasi na Blizzard executive naglagay siya sa LinkedIn page na na he's involved in a Diablo TV series. So, yan yung na yan. so what this is telling us is, number one, uh, trademark protection depends on class. So again, this goes back also to the copyright lesson covering of the basis. So if you're a gaming company, you, you, you want to protect your trademark, you have to look at the different classes. Ano ba yung plan mo? So for now, game siya. So sige, makafile ako ng games. But after three years, salimbawa, so may cut na siya. What's going to be my next plan? And what am I going to make t-shirts for this product? Then you find a trademark with the same name, but ang goods mo na is t-shirts. So depende siya sa class. No? So you have to, meaning you have to really have a roadmap on what's going to happen to your product. As a competitor, kung ikaw yung competitor, it gives you an idea of what the company is planning. Kasi especially for the big uh, game studios, they always try to file before they do something. I plan na pala. They, they, now, they, now, they now file for trademark. Kasi hindi pala sila sure kung itutuloy nila, but it's there. And one of the examples again here, another example na hindi ko nalagay is, uh, I think there was a time na yung nag-file sa Japan ng trademark for Super Smash Brothers. So at the time, hindi alam na pala, bakit sila nag-file? And it turns out, it was actually the uh, Nintendo Switch version. So may mga ganun, no? it gives you an idea, ba? Ano, what is the company planning? Uh, tama ba? So ikaw din, if, if you have similar games in the same genre, then you can prepare na, oy, they're planning something. Is it going to hurt my sales, for example? Are they going to get my players? Then maybe I should prepare. So if, if you're a small company, then you have to be ready for that. At least alam mo na, oy, mukhang may planong pumasok ng Valve sa Philippines. At tingin ko, baka baka they will try to compete with my game. So then you need to prepare. Para if, if what you're thinking happens, then wala ka na masyadong i-worry kasi ready ka. So that's that's the beauty of trademark. But again, you have to be proactive, meaning you have to consistently look on what they're doing. That's And that's going to be, of course, difficult, especially for companies, no? gaming companies na maliit lang. But, but again, the benefit usually at the cost. And again, again, as mentioned, uh, you have to consider every option. So yan kasi yung most uh, businesses kasi, whether it's a gaming, gaming or not, they, they, they usually forget kasi ang trademark. Eh. And uh, what I say about this, is, it's like copyright, no? uh, the, <coughs> the interest in trademark or copyright is there. The appreciation is low kasi nga magastos siya, but wala pa kasi talaga nangyari na, di ba? Parang, but imagine if nangyari sa iyo, may business ka, may business name ka, hindi mo tinademark, naunahan ka. So parang ganun. So masakit talaga yan sa iyo. So that's why we tell na if you want, uh, if you're really planning to put up a company, whether it's a gaming company or a, a typical business, dapat isama mo talaga sa budget mo. But you're going to have to file a trademark. Para whatever happens, pag sumikat ka, then uh, 
patay na yung brand mo. But hindi ka sumikat. You can always, like what the Dota Underlords did, you can always discard the application. So after pilas, ilang years, sabihin nyo, ay, ayaw ko na, hindi na ako mag-re-renew. So you don't need to pay na. Kasi you gave up na on the intellectual property. Uh, there's also this question na, can you use other trademark for your video game? Uh, there's really no example yet in the Philippines, but in the US, they have what we call as the Rogers test. So, It's a way of protecting the protected trademark with free speech. Because in the U.S., for example, the grabe yung <coughs> excuse ah uh, grabe yung uh, value dila for free speech. And the test is my artistic relevance by yung paggamit ng trademark. And if yes, is it misleading? But as to the source of the content or content of the work, no? so. What does this mean? So an example of this is GTA San Andreas. And if you've heard the game, it's actually the the setting itself no is more as, uh, it's like a parody of uh Los Angeles, California. So in order to do that, what the what the developers did, they had a team of paraban photographers that went around the city taking pictures para e para nila e recreate inside the game. So that's their goal. So one of these was, they call this the pig pen. It's, it's a game because this is a mature game. So this was a strip club sa game. So this was actually based on an actual na establishment, which is the play pen. So medyo pareho na natin. No? They have the sign there. They have the parang canopy, etc. So of course, the, the play pen filed for trademark infringement, citing na, hey, Obvious naman na kami yan. But using the Rogers test, the court said, number one, the game uh, parodies the city. C- C- no? So my artistic relevance na, of course, since nag-parody ka na kong city, it's given na ipaparody mo rin siguro yung ibang businesses within that particular city. So you're going to make them, you're going to have to include it in the game. So that's the arti- artistic relevance. Meaning, you can justify bakit siya sinama. No? So, The, so they they passed the first test the, the GTA. The second is uh, even if you see the pig pen and then familiar ka sa play pen, hindi pa pasok kasi sa utak mo na para bang this is a sponsor but yun parang karanay na play pen ng gawa. Alam mo kasi this is part of the game and chances are hindi talaga involved yung original establishment. So they passed the second test. So parang yun yun nangyari mo. So uh, The, the court allowed them na walang time for infringement kasi there's free speech na pinarody lang kayo and then obvious naman na the, the players will not associate it with you na hindi nila isipin na ito pala yung ano kasi alam nila it's a game lang so that's that's one of the uh, ano din, that, that's one of the cases here so in your case if you're playing but again it, it, it all boils down to due diligence so titignan mo talaga na if I'm going to use this will they be okay so sometimes it's better that if Tingin mo, they really don't want and they really after money. Diba mo lang isama sa game mo? So that's also part of it. Uh, GTA, can't af- they can't afford to do this kasi malaki na sila na company. So even if my case, medyo kaya nila. But if, if you're a, a starting lang or even, for example, thesis mo siya, so be careful lang sa mga ganyan aspects. So gusto mong gayahin yung town nyo. So pag tingin mo ito, malaki na business, huwag mo lang sila isama. So no, may jalib. And hindi ko muna isasama yung jalib eh. Unless, of course, uh, tingin mo, isama mo, pag sinabi nila, ayaw nila, tangalin mo kakad sa game. So may mga ganun yung mga aspects. Okay, and oy, this brings us to the last uh, IP, which is patents. And uh, under patents, no, uh, Section 172, which is copyright actually, tells us that <coughs> computer programs can only be protected through copyright. And This is supported also under the personal patent, which is section 22.2, that programs for computers are not non-patentable. So, hindi ka talaga pwede. So, remember, ha, the program itself is only copyright. And by program, we're referring to the source code. But under the implementing rules and regulation, you can actually patent computer-related inventions, meaning a software hardware, and then the function. So putting all that into one, I don't know, one, uh, ano tawag dyan? One package, pwede mo siya mapatid. But if software lang, hindi pwede. 
But if you associate a software with a hardware and a function, then pwede mo siyang kapatid. And that's, in a way, yan yung nangyari sa games. You can now patent a uh, software or some game gameplay na mechanics. You can patent. Mga specific na, again, na, you cannot copyright the basic game mechanics, but some of the special mechanics pwede mo mga patent. Uh, in general, under Section 21, <coughs> patentable inventions are any technical solutions to a problem. So, you have a problem, you have a solution, then it's possible that solution can be a patentable invention. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is only trade secret na hindi mo kailangan mag-file. So, meaning, uh, when it comes to patents, you have to file this with the Intellectual Property Office. So, which means... Uh, your invention is going to be accessible to other people or to other. So in, in the case of a gaming studio, your, your software or your game is going to be, whatever feature it is, it's going to be accessible to your competitors. That's why in, in patent, pwede mo kasing gamitin yung parang ibahin mo yun ang konti yung language para maintindihan pa rin ng patent office, pero for any third party na nagbabasa, medyo malilito sila. So, yan yung technique visual sa patent. You, you use the language as a way to disclose but make it difficult enough to be understood by any third party. So, for example, uh, this is a uh, patent. The title of the patent is a Contextually Aware Communication System in Video Games. So, parang di ba? Is it, so, kung mag-iisip ka, what is a context? Contextually Aware Communication System. So, may mga ganun. So, that itself, the title itself, as you can see, medyo mahirap sa intindihin. No? But if you're familiar with how patents are written, mahukaw mo ka agad. But if you're, again, if you're just reading, hindi mo makapuha. So, this is actually a patent filed by uh, EA for Apex Legends. And when we talk about a contextually aware system, it's actually what they're saying is, if you're familiar with games, no? Uh, this is the ping system. So, you ping ka lang. No? Uh, you're, you're pinging information to your teammates. Now, wait, I'm here. There are enemies here. You can pick up items here, etc. So, it's, it's, so, you can notice, no? Iba, iba yung titles, actual feature. So for, the, for the typical gamer, we call it as the ping system. But for the patent, we call it as the contextually aware communication system. So I'll give like a short example. What's up guys? In, in this short tutorial, I will show you how to use ping I will show you how to use pinging in Apex Legends. So first of all, the ping key is set to your scroll wheel button by default. You can change it in the communication section of your keyboard settings. Use the key once to suggest a location. Simply aim at where you want the indicator to be. Your teammates will also be able to see your pings. Next, to indicate that you spotted an enemy, use the same key twice. To remove any ping, you will need to aim at it and use the scroll wheel button again. You can also ping ammunition and weapons when aiming at them. Lastly, press and hold the scroll wheel key to preview the ping menu, where you can communicate that someone has been here, to defend an area, to go somewhere, and so on. I hope this helped you out. Leave a comment. So, as you notice now, it's, it's, you, you can say, but ah, ganun lang, pwede mo na yes. Because it's it's a different it's a it's a way of adding features to the game, no. So your game mechanic is just fighting with another team, shooting, but they have this game mechanic which is communicating through the ping system, no. Again, the uh, problem solution approach. So in the case, they solve a problem sa, with the use of the ping. So instead na mag sa salita kala or mga type, you just use the ping system. Na click kala o oh, ito yung there are enemies here, there are items here, no? so. So one of the benefits of that ping system is that it limited toxicity sa game. Kasi if, if you're familiar with online games, no, maraming nag-aaway dyan. Ha? They, they, they type or they, they use audio. But with the ping system, limited lang kasi yung options mo. So wala ka magagawa. So ping ka lang ng ping. And it's also more inclusive in the sense na, for example, if hearing impaired yung, kalap, yung player or even they cannot speak, no? So they can still play the game kasi may ping system. They can see man, oy, na, nag-ping dito yung kakampi ko, so I have to go there. So that's... Now, remember, under the patent system, 
the owner of the patent has a monopoly to use that uh, invention for a certain number of years. So, sila yung pwedeng gumamit. But in this case, a case na uh, pain system, uh, this is actually what they call as part of EA's accessibility patent pledge. Meaning, since since the pain system is helps no, with accessibility sa game, especially for the, for example, the hearing impaired uh, under the pledge, they, they are willing to collaborate with other game developers to use the system. No? For, for a quad lang, for a limited, uh, parang hindi naman lahat siguro, but at least they're willing to partner with uh, other game developers so that those game developers can use their patent na which is aimed at being more inclusive. No? So para yun din naglalaro ng ibang games, pwede rin maka-access yung mga halimbawa kayo, hearing impaired. So that's, that's sa example na to, that's one of the good things lang sa patent. No? That they're, they're, the owner of the patent has the right to do what they can with the patent. No? So pwede sila i-monopolize na ayokong may gamit or pwede sila na pwede niya gamitin under a partnership and then only with this limitation. So may mga gano'n pa uh, another example no, is, if you look at this, again, the name is Graphical Interface for Interactive Dialogue. So, for the first sentence lang, uh, a system and method for creating conversation in a computer program such as a video game. So, that's the sample. And if you're one of those, again, no, no, in the industry, this patent was actually by the creators of Mass Effect. And again, the name no, is Graphical Interface for Interactive Dialogue. Uh, in the gaming community, we call it as the dialogue wheel. So meaning, it gives you kung ano yung sasagot mo sa conversation. So it's a dialogue wheel. So you just choose kung alin yung gagamitin mo. But again, because of this pattern, this is a very easy pattern na because if you can see, medyo nakatilt yung orientation, mas madali siya tayo sa mata. But because again, it is a pattern that not, not, uh, other games cannot use it. So that's why during that's why if you look at other similar games no, na may uh, conversation, dialogue, iba yung ano nila, di ba? If you look at this, uh, it's still conversation, pero di ba parang ang gulo. Tatamaan yung character mo. Matatabunan siya. Then we also have what we call as the list. Meaning, mag-down ka pa para makita mo yung lahat na choices. Compared mo sa dialogue wheel, na, which is very easy. So, that's, that's the beauty of patterns because they cannot use that, te that technology until after the patent expires. No? So, yun yung advantage na nakita niya. Diba? So, again, uh, problem, solution, approach. Uh, another example of patents is, <coughs> so we have recording medium method of loading games. So, this is a very old patent actually. No? Uh, and the way, ano, na-expire na yata yung patent na to. So, if you play games, di ba? We, even whether it's PC, console, or even mobile games, di ba, you have this loading time na parang wala nangyayari sa screen mo kasi naglo-load yung game. Kaya nga, di ba, parang uh, pamasok sa modern lexicon yung term na loading kasi parang wala nangyayari. But actually, uh, Namco actually patented a way before na while naglo-loading, may gagawin ka. No? So in this case, you know, test pwede ka maglaro ng Games. No, so they, they, they found a way that instead na titigin ka lang sa screen, you can look at uh, mini games. But again, patent is not forever, so I think na expire to siya. That's why some of the new games they now incorporate this in this game. So in this case, for example, instead again of loading screen, uh, the game, this is a uh, bayonetta, no, allows you to practice the moves while naghihintay ka na malod yung game. So so if you notice, it's, it's a really big difference kasi nga, instead of maghihintay ka lang, it, it lets you do something. So hindi ka mabobore. So diba, imagine if you're mobile game mo while the load. Of course, it's, this is going to be impossible in mobile games because of memory issues. But for other games like console or PC, possible siya. So that's why you can do this. But again, before na, na, na stop your patent, no other games could do this, no? the method of loading. Uh, again, no, again, this is also, again, if you notice, this is from Sega. This is a game display method, moving direction indicating method. So, ang haba, no? Then if you 
glance lang at abstract parang ang kira pintindig siya ang daming technical terms. And this is again an old pattern I think this already expired. Basically this is the directional arrow. Yung pag nalaglaro ka ng games may arrow na lumalabas para titingnan mo kung tama ba yung pinupuntahan mo. So if mali, minsan nagre-rev yung arrow. If you're going to the other direction, pupunta siya sa other direction. So again, they patented these features again, no? the directional arrow. But again, since expired na yung patent, then pwede mo na gamitin. So again, the, 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 the thing to remember is here, if, you, if you're going to implement some features in your game, you have to do research talaga. Is this feature already offered? And if offered, is it patented? Because if not, then go ahead and use that feature. Yan lang yun naman eh. And remember, uh, patent, like trademarks is territorial. So the patent sa Philippines, so bigat yung game mo sa US, sa US patented, sabihin mo, oh, wala naman akong plan mag-market sa US. Diba? So hindi ko nakasalanan yan. My market is the Philippines. So para bang, hindi ka makasalanan sa bigat siya sa US. So may mga ganun na parang uh, examples. Uh, I have the last two examples now, and one of the things is uh, what we call the sanity system. This is a very good example. Again, it's from an old game. Uh, because if you're playing games, uh, especially yung, uh, what we call as uh, role-playing games, uh, one of the gener general features ng games is that, di ba, may life ka. Pag naubos, patay ka. But in the game na ano, uh, in Eternal Darkness, uh, they have what we call the sanity system. Yan yung green na, uh, ito yung green. No? Now what happens is, pag naubos siya, when may mangyayari sa game mo, it will trigger something. No? And it's going to trigger different things. So pwede na blur yung game mo. No? So I'll give uh, two examples, uh, apologies lang. No? If, ano, kasi ano to eh. And this is a horror game, so may mga sigaw-sigaw-sigaw. No? So be careful lang sa whole game. So this is the first. Okay, so it's hard to capture no? but what happened is naubos yung sanity meter niya yung game automatically <laughs> na automatic siya na ni lower niya yung volume so yung mga players that time they were thinking na ha na, na, naupuan ko ba yung remote control or ano nangyari so that, that's part of the game mechanic nila na kung baga bigla mawawala yung volume ng game mo so it's affecting your actual game okay. no? So nawala talaga. So a lot of people no, parang nag-panic yung iba. Kasi lang, bakit, bakit bigla na ano yung volume? Uh, the second example is even enjoyable. No? Uh, medyo matagal siya. But, uh, let's look. No, so as you notice, most likely na obos yung para sanity meter ng player, nag-try siya mag-save kasi baka mangyari. So, ang nangyari pala, what the game did, while nag-save siya, ginawa ng game, it's as if, kunyari, nag-delete ka. So, wala ka lang magawa kasi bilang lumabas yung option na are you sure you want to delete, tapos nag-continue siya to delete the save game. So, that's, that's, a, that's a really good feature no, when you think about it. Kasi it's it's making your player think, manala, did I really delete? So uh, I I've read about this particular feature. Dona, there were the, there were players na when this happened, hindi kasi nila alam na part of the game mechanics. So, when you started deleting the yung iba, tinanggal talaga nila yung console from the plug, hoping na hindi na hindi madelete yung game nila, kasi hindi nila alam. Eh. So again, that's 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 a really good feature, and that itself can be patented. And then uh, the final example I give, para in a while we wrap things up, is the Nemesis system. So again, no, the, the title is technical and then the abstract is a bit technical. So uh, this is uh, a feature of the game, the Shadow of Mordor, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. And this is a very interesting feature. Uh, what it does is uh, focus just on orcs, if you're familiar with Lord of the Rings. 
yung kalaban talaga nila sa mga orcs. Yun ang nangyayari sa nemesis system is, halimbawa, nasa level 2 ka pala, you, 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 you fought against this orc, diba? Tapos inaway mo siya. Tapos na-injure mo siya. Tapos parang ikaw naman, parang, ah, iba kasi yung objective ko, hayaan ko lang siya makata- so Hayaan ko lang siya makatakas. So, hinayaan mo siya makatakas. So, you continue on with your quest, with your mission sa game. So, what the nemesis system does is, yung orc na nakatakas, as you progress in your game, siya rin pala nagpo-progress. So because because uh, that that character managed to survive from you, tumaas yung rank niya within their tribe halimbawa. So let's say level 10 ka na, when you meet that same character, mas ano na siya, mas mataas na yung rank niya. So pwede na from bodyguard halimbawa, naging captain na siya because of that particular experience from you. So yun yung ginagawa ng system. So parang para bang it the, the the computer character remembers what you did to that character and it's going to affect the game. So They, 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 it's a really good system and there, there are already a lot of uh, players no, na hoping that other games will also implement it but again the patent is still active so hindi pa basta-basta magamit ng system na to. but uh, for you as a game developer it's going to be interesting because uh, if, if you really want this to incorporate in your game then you're going to have to look at what's going to happen with this patent uy malapit na pala mo expired to halimbawa lang or Maybe I can try to enter into an agreement with them to use this particular system in my game. So may mga ganun, ano. So again, it it goes in back to you what what your plan is for your particular game. So again, this is a very good system. So in terms of uh, commentary lessons, I divide it into two. So for example, as if you're an individual or employee or you're you're a game developer, uh, when it comes to the intellectual property of games. Uh, you always start to review your contract or agreements. No? Now, what does it say? Because usually, by default, sa uh, law natin, if wala kang agreement, uh, most likely the IP will go to the company. So you have to review your contract. Agreement. What's the limitation of your uh, agreement? What's the provision on IP? Kasi nga, uh, while you're a game developer lang, you're working for a company, diba? of course, you're, you're the assigned task. What if you, again, if you were the one working, for example, doon sa Shadow of Mordor, what if ikaw yung nakadiscover ng nemesis system or ng sanity system? Does your contract allow for incentives for you to improve the game? So yun yung mga ganun na, 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 na mechanisms na wala pa lang suggest, nakita mo na, hey, this feature can really work in our game. Ano ba yung incentive to you as a game developer? So you have to look into that. You have to clarify that with the company. But on the other hand, if you're a startup or if a you if you're a game if you want to build a game development company, uh, you always have to understand you know, the the basic gameplay. You're going to have to make a game uh, similar gameplay with others, you know? uh, especially with mob, uh, mobile gaming most likely ang dami ng pare-pareho game sa iyo. So you have to address that fact. You have to accept that. Unless, of course, you can find a really uh, different gameplay that would make its own genre. So which means, uh, when, when you're making games, you have to offer unique or new features. So in the case of the games I presented earlier, so the sanity system, the nemesis system, the dialogue wheel, you have to offer features that will make you stand out against uh, games in the similar genre. Especially if you're a new player, nahanap ka talaga dapat ano bang feature mo. Not necessarily siguro uh, about gameplay, pwede rin siguro kahit sa, sa story, sa text, or sa user interface. So may mga ganun, but try to find a way to differentiate para naman you have a competitive advantage. Uh, it's also possible na you can combine ga- uh, other features no? na using the different IP. So uh, one example that I can think of is let's say you combine the sanity system with the dialogue wheel. Na para bang eh, bumababa na yung level ng sanity system, sanity niya, yung options niya sa dialogue umiiba rin or let's say nagiging blurred so hindi mo alam kung ano yung isasagot mo. So may mga ganun. So you can combine features. Because if you're good, if you can find a way to find that really good combination, that itself can be patentable. No? So different an approach natin when it comes to a startup and a different approach natin if you're just a game developer working for a particular company. And then uh, I always advise uh, clients na na, 
uh, whether you're starting a business or whether it's game development, you have you need to protect or always uh, consider protecting your IP, even at the, at the start of the development process. So yung trademark, if not my new features, so yung patent, because in the case of patents, for example, ang patent kasi matagal siya na process. Usually it takes one or two years before ma approve. Generally, ha, uh, I think most uh, IP offices are trying to find a way to expedite, but generally one to two years siya. Okay? But during mag file ka na sa start kasi by the time na matapos mo yung game mo in two years or three years, nagawa mo na siya, i-release mo sa market, ready na yung IP mo, yung protection. No? So, ando na yung trademark protection, ando na yung patent protection, so hindi ka matatakot to release the game. Kasi pag nag-release ka, even if beta pa lang siya or sample pa lang siya, tapos wala ka protection, mahirap kasi baka makopya. So, when nag-develop ka pa lang, you file the protection para honey in hand siya na while you're developing the game, the protection is also there working with you. So, by the time na ma-approve yung protection mo, tapos na rin yung initial development mo sa game. Okay, so yan yun. And uh, I'll end with this, no, na if we go back to the history of the game, we have Magnavox, Atari, Arcade, Home Gaming. So what's going to be the trend? No? And uh, fortunately, if you were aware of the news, naglabas si Meta ng, ano nila, no? their one hour long uh, uh, feature, but I'll on, I only added the gaming. I grabbed their gaming on the one minute and Hopefully, this gives us a, a preview of, of what what's going to be in their case of Meta, in the case of Meta, what they're planning for the future of games and how Siguro you, as a game developer or game enthusiast, can join or can come up with innovations to uh, be part of this uh, new trend. So I play yeah. Gaming in the metaverse is going to span from immersive experiences in fantasy worlds to bringing simple games into our everyday lives through holograms. Maybe you'll play old games in new ways. So, uh, Barcelona, huh? <laughs> well, it's not New York, but I like it. New York misses you. What's that? I said, let me put my game face on so I can beat you. Ah, okay. Check. I gotta try another game face next time. <laughs> Maybe you'll go head to head with players from around the world. It's like a shop. Some call it skill. Keep talking. Or maybe you'll do things that aren't even possible in gaming today. Okay, so as you see, no, uh, that, that, that's the plan for Meta. So there's going to be a lot of innovations happening, and if you're a if if you're if you're a game developer, then you have to prepare for that. And one way to do that is to protect your IP. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, listening, and I hope uh, we learned a lot today, no, especially sa gaming. Okay. So. Okay, uh, thank you, TLRC. Hi, sir. Good morning. Hello, Jara. Padun naman di ay ko, padun naman day 12. Yes, okay. sir. <laughs> Na interested ko kaya ngano kusog ba ako mudua o ano, Dota. <laughs> I was like, um, because Dota was first, Dota was first, um, a mini game in a larger. Mod. It's a mod. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. And then it became its own after quite some time, no? no uh, ah. Actually, no, Dota is also a good example uh, if you're a gamer, no? Uh, uh, we call it as a mod kasi, diba? Uh, mm -mm. It, it's, the game was Warcraft, gumawa sila ng parang mini game or mod using the IP of World of Warcraft. But ang nangyari mm -hmm. kasi, the owner, ang Blizzard, para hindi nila nakita yung potential. Uh. So, that property eventually the developers of that mod went to Valve, and then they 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 they, they removed the names, iniba nila yung names, iniba nila yung chura, and then it so became one defense of the ancients. Do na. Because yung Dota kasi part yeah. na Blizzard, so ginawa nila uh, is Dota. Two. I see. Yes. So if mahilig po kayo sa Dota, 
Nan <laughs> panood ng Dota. You know that Dota uh, Dota 2 eh. Dota 2's um um map is actually very iconic that it is almost the same as the League of Legends as well as the Mobile Legends na map but the difference would have been the gameplay, the use of the uh the use of the builds, no, of the items as well as the amount of time for the game to finish. And that's so, why also it's called Dota 2 no? because they cannot use technically they cannot use the word ancients. Yes. That's why yung name nila is hindi sila Defense of the Ancients. Dota 2 lang yung name nila. Dota kasi, 2 na lang talaga. Kasi the word ancients is owned by Blizzard. Hindi yes. yun na pwedeng gamitin. Mm. Of course, uh, mm. players know na yun talaga yung meaning. You just don't <laughs> use it. Parang ka na. Yes. <laughs> kasi iba na talaga siya. Eh. Like, different game on its own. And also different um, uh, developers as well. Okay. But so, but uh, just as as I as I explained earlier sa webinar, the, the the purpose actually of this is just to show you by uh we, we can actually discuss copyright in the context of a particular industry, no? Yes. Because if, mm. if we discuss kasi copyright, if I discuss copyright, tapos you have a wide audience. I need to have different. But if for example, ikaw, you're a, you're a part of a certain industry, then we can actually have discussions, no? Na, you're part of the, let's say, recording industry, songs, the mm-hmm. songs, and we can make a parabang discussion na based lang dyan, para at least relevant naman yun. So this is just a way of showing you na, ngayon ko na kasi yung games eh. So, mm-hmm. so madaling maghanap ng examples. <laughs> <laughs> may nag-ask uh, kung, <laughs> may nag-ask kung solve na ba daw yung Dota 2 at saka LOL. <laughs> I think wala masyadong, wala masyadong issue sa IP nila. Ah, uh, uh, wala uh, masyadong issue. It's it's more on sa player base na yung nag-aaway kasi mm. and, and LOL actually is more concerned before sa mobile legends. Uh, uh, actually, yung Dota kasi may ibang cult following talaga yung nangyari yung sa Dota. Uh, and it's so different from the from the fan base of uh, LOL. Um very good example ako. Hindi ko talaga na enjoy yung League of Legends because yung brain ko is wired on how Dota is actually being played. So and it's also fun. because iba kasi yung specific mechanics niya. I mean the yes. basic gameplay is there pero iba na yung specific. For example si balik ako si Ma'am <laughs> sino ba yun? Si Ma'am Charmaine no? forever Candy Crush fans. And ako, I love Candy Crush but every time there's a new similar game I always try it out. Eh. And eventually, parang it, it's it comes to a point talaga na different siya. Pero parang, oh well, parang honestly naman, isip ko pa rin talaga na parang siya. Actually, yeah. yung uh, isip ko hindi kay Nick Rush, eh, yung mas, mas luma na game. Kalimutan ko yung title. Yung ano, yung My Frog. Na, ah, oo. Oh, oh. Do you, you remember? Isa, diba? Yung, yung PC game siya na parang oh, oh. parang frog na nasa Amazon Forest kayo. Three by three rin yun. Oh, pero para siya nagmo-move, di ba? Mm-hmm. Mas 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 na-remember ko kasi yun eh. Yung Candy Crush lang kasi talaga grabe. Yung, yung kailangan mong i-shoot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yun yung ano. Oh. Zuma, oh, Zuma. Ah, Zuma yun. <laughs> oh. Yes. Mas talaga ka sa Zuma. Oh. Mm. Which is almost yung, the same as yung same, If you notice, same lang yung gameplay niya with oh. the Tetris, Zuma, Candy mm-hmm. Crush, but different lang yung presentations nila. Mm-hmm. Yung Candy Crush kasi sumikat siya in such a way na ang daming similar games na gano'n na yung ginawa. Mm-hmm. No? Mahirap. Actually, when you, when you, kat- yung naka-experience ng Zuma, hirap ng Zuma eh. Oh, diba? hirap yun. Mahirap yan. siya. Hindi mo alam kasi yung darating talaga. Oh. One by one yun eh. Oh. One by one na darating. Match 3 na Candy Crush, parang ano kasi siya, casual gaming kasi, di ba? Parang uh. naghihintay ka ng meeting or yung iba habang nabimiting. <laughs> you can be crash. Alam so, ko, yun, <laughs> a lot of people are doing that. So, so <laughs> y- yan lang yung mga, ano, no? so, y- if if you're teaching, for example, game, if you're one of, if you're a part of the academy and you're teaching game development, just just remind your students lang, no? when, you, when you talk about game, you always try to look also into intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Kasi, what we're, what we're saying is, sayang kasi, baka may nagawa siya ng magandang game, yun pala, masyadong pareho sa ano, mm. no? And we're not saying na kinopya niya. It's possible kasi na inspired ka, di ba? Alimbawa, laro ka lang laro ng Candy Crush. It comes to a point later na gagaw ka ng game na similar to Candy Crush kasi yun yung influence mo. Di ba? So, parang ganun lang. So, be careful lang. So, if you're teaching, just remind them na 
check for IP just to see if it's really a new game or a new feature. It's a holistic yun. Um, you have to look for the copyrights. You have to deal with trademarks, and you have also to deal with patents. Um, parang holistic. So, dapat na due diligence talaga on the case of the development. And you, I understand talaga din na for a, even if isang game lang ginawa mo, ang dami kang pwedeng gawin na IP, no? So, you have patents, mm. you have trademarks, you have copyrights, ang dami pwedeng ma-protect. Mm. And that's why I, I, I always say na always check all avenues kung na-protect ko ba lahat. Kasi mahirap na ipagsabikat ka. And it's a challenge also, no? especially in the Philippines, na how, how do we come up with new games? Ito yung maraming mga games eh, na interesting and hindi lang talaga sila that much supported for now. Na sa, I mean, on the local scene ba, for the Philippines. Kasi nga, mahirap eh. For example, console games. Mahirap kasi mahal yung console eh. Diba? How much, mm-hmm. magkano yung PS4 or else PS5. Pag PC naman, you have to, ano diba, you have to set time na upo ka, may lalaro ka. Uh... So yun nangyari, Malakas talaga sa Philippines, for example, ang mobile, mobile games. Mobile games. Kasi you can do it anywhere. Eh. So meaning, uh-huh. if you have to make a game, most likely it's mobile games. But the, the genres are so saturated, it's going to be really difficult for you to enter the market unless you really have something new to offer. No? So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe gagawa kayo ng parang Candy Crush, pero ano ba? Mukha ng mga presidential post. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll play that game. Siguro no, in time for the election gagawa ka. So, instead na kindi siya bababa, you know, mga mukha ng mga presidential boss natin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, may mga gano'n, no? So, uh, that's the, ang daming consideration. So, that's why you also have to identify your market. So, if you're targeting US, then siguro pwede kang gumawa ng PC game or console game, no? Pero pag titingin mo, gusto ko ng Philippines, most likely, mobile games talaga yung ano. Sir Jason, may, may na-drop ka kanina tapos hindi mo na-protect. <laughs> <laughs> Sinabi mo yung idea eh. Ah, okay lang. Baka may isa dito gagawa ng idea mo. Gawa ko na lang free sa kanila na yan. <laughs> okay, so uh, oh, Okay, about the intellectual. Applicable po ba uh, yung creative? Yeah, uh, creative commons is uh, applicable everywhere. Actually, as a background, ang tawag dyan dati is copyleft. Hmm. Kasi iba yung features na. So, Creative Commons, there are different types of licenses. and But uh, one of the examples kasi dyan is, halimbawa, gagawa ako ng content, no? Let's say, gagawa ako na ano ba? Ganda. Gagawa ako ng story. So, that's a copyright. So, sabihin ko, okay, uh, Jera can use my story, the characters in my story, the setting, to add to add new content, provided, for example, that Jera will not commercialize. Mm. her content parang gano'n so that's one of the license sa creative commons so yes Microsoft can uh, file for intellectual property so in the case of PowerPoints for example itong presentation na to it's actually remember uh, copyright is protected at the moment of creation so technically ang PowerPoint na to this is mine no? mm. so meaning if you were to make a uh, Oh, sige, uh, sige na lang. If you were to make a, uh, a, a discussion on IP and gaming, pwede mong gayahin, for example, yung flow ng discussion ko. Pwede mong ibahin. But if gamitin mo yung word for word, diba, tapos binenta mo, yan yung difference, no? I uh, explain it in a copyright code. Pag ginamit mo yung slide ko, word for word, kahit iniba mo yung pictures, that's, I think, that to be plagiarism kasi, diba, hindi sa general context. So, ako, wala tayo mag-guide. Para mo binenta ba? Nilagay mo sa isang site na if you download this slide, babayaran. Pwede, kung habulin kita o hindi, but, but that's the general idea. No? Mm. So, so, be careful with your PowerPoint. But if you really think your uh, PowerPoint presentation is unique, uh, just find a way na Kumbaga, you can prove later on na kayo talaga yung nauna hmm. sa PowerPoint. Yan, yan That's lang. also the reason that here in TLRC, a lot of you will actually ask for a PowerPoint, but we actually tell you to go directly to the YouTube channel and review all of the discussion rather than you having the PowerPoint. This is also in protection of our speakers and the contents that they create. Because in YouTube, of course, you'll be able to see the face of the speaker as the owner of the PowerPoint. So, yeah, that's, that's also that's one advantage. Kasi, di ba, 
nag-present ka, nakikita yung mukha mo, at least you can have evidence na, oye, akin to. Ito yung mm-hmm. proof ko. Yeah, yeah. So that's also one of the, so, halimbawa, nag-present ka, if, if nag-invite yung TLRC sa iyo, then maybe you can ask, siguro, the TLRC of copy sa video. Pwede ganun na. Can I ask mm-hmm. a copy of the video? Para lang may mapakita ka, na, yes, you were the one who owned, who owned the presentation. So may ganun. Exactly. Yeah. So sorry oh. po talaga if we cannot give you a copy of the PowerPoint of our speakers because again, it's in the protection of our speakers' contents and the things that they are creating. And, so, uh, and actually yeah. for us, uh, whether with TTBD or TLRC, we would actually prefer no, if, you're, if you like, for example, the presentations so or any of our presentations, you can actually request na lang na can, can you have the presentation for our university, for example? Exactly. You know? So that will, have, that, will, that will actually be better for everyone, I think. Sabi niyo, pwede ba ito yung gawin niyo sa amin? Ito yung audience? Ito yung expected participants, etc. Then we can set a schedule for that. No? We can discuss on how we can. Mas better yan. Isa sa higit ka, ito mag-explain. So why not invite us na lang? Kami na lang oh, mag-explain. So, right? Exactly. Okay. So that's on the case of your PPT. As well, if you wanted to, if you are a content creator, for example, for educational purposes or something like that, you may want to go to creativecommons.org directly and have a Creative Commons application for your specific material. I've seen a lot of teachers who are actually doing that. So depende... uh, Depende po yun sa kung anong uh, Creative Commons na license yung kinuha nila. Pwede yung uh, gamitin, pwede yung i- mag- gumawa ng revision or gumawa ng modification as long as the authors or the initial content creator are being attributed. So, you just uh, have I, to... Ano lang, no? I'll share lang what Jera is talking. Yung ano lang... Okay. If you really have questions on Creative Commons IP, yeah, you can find, you can contact me anytime then. No? I'm I'm open naman for discussions and consultations. So just email me at it's so that upcbo at upcbo.ph if you need uh, additional consultations or clarifications. Okay, so Sir Jason is always here with us to talk about those stuff. Actually, madaling ka usap sa Sir Jason if you have inquiries, you can actually ask him directly at it so that upcebu at edut that upcebu at up that edut okay. okay so okay, okay, okay so almost 12 na po well, tayo little well, bit of reminders michael and um noel <laughs> sir jason thank you so much thank this you. is the so, last of our uh for october for october <laughs> <laughs> we still have uh, quite november. a few more in november yeah. Mag, ano pa tayo, Jera? Let's talk na lang for our November na, ano, <laughs> na plans. Yes. Sige, sige. Okay, okay, so... Thank you. Muna na ako, Jera. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So today is actually a back-to-back, uh, back-to-back webinar. Uh, we started with Sir Jason and now later on we will have um, Miss Erica in Cabo for her integration of social media in teaching literature. So hopefully you will also be there uh, if you are actually interested. On the case of our evaluation, uh, Mike and Jenna po ba yung evaluation thing natin? So kindly give the evaluation link and also some reminders for our evaluation. Okay. So, ansyan na po yung evaluation link natin. Do not forget to evaluate. Uh, the evaluation link is only open for 15 minutes. And please do evaluate honestly. Okay. And after evaluation, you'll be able to get your, um, get your certificate afterwards. Okay. Now, our evaluation and processing of these certificates are actually automated, so please make sure to type the correct spelling of your name since this will reflect on your e-certificates. Also, please be mindful in typing your email address because it is where you will receive your certificates. We highly suggest that you keep a copy of your response in the evaluation for you to verify if you have made mistakes. Always click send me a copy of my responses before submitting and normally 
It takes less than three minutes after submitting to receive your certificate. And should you not be able to receive it by 5 p.m. today, just send a reply message with your concern to the confirmation email that we sent at msdeloreo at up.edu.ph. And we will manually send the certificate on the next working day. And be mindful also that our certificate and evaluation link is open for only 15 minutes. So kindly make sure that you evaluate within that 15 minute period. Okay. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us in our webinar, our first webinar for today on gaming and intellectual property. And you were, you were able to learn that <laughs> games have a lot to deal with when it comes to intellectual property. And there is always a chance no, if you do not uh, have due diligence, no, especially if you plan to create games or plan to create uh, businesses as well as programs, then you must have due diligence when it comes to intellectual property. Okay. I would like to invite you also later in the afternoon for our integration of social media in teaching literature. That's 1.30 uh, p.m. with uh, Ms. Erica Incabo. Ms. Erica Incabo is researching on social media and the writing of literature. So if you are interested on that matter, I highly suggest that you join us later this afternoon. Mike, kumusta dyan? <laughs> yes, miss. Okay lang po, miss. Um, can we request everyone to turn on their cameras para sa uh, documentation natin? Pictorials po. Favorite pictorials po tayo. <laughs> okay. So, pictorials muna tayo. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, so we are only posting the evaluation link. So I hope na nag-evaluate na po kayo kasi open lang po siya in 15 minutes po. Okay. Excellent. Hello po sa lahat. <laughs> we have uh, five slides. So keep smiling lang po kasi we don't know kung saan slides kayo mapasama. Okay, so be proud of ano, joining us kasi mapasama po kayo sa, ano, sa recommendations namin na sinasubmit po namin sa UP System Reports. So, di ba? <laughs> And we are also very happy to see all of your faces. If this was a real webinar, it could have been better. But having your faces now, being able to see your faces, even that small square screens now, is already very good as well. Okay. Oh, we have um, from Suleiman University, New Era University. <laughs> okay. Marami pala tayo, no? Ngayong araw na to. Although the, the webinar is actually very specific, but I'm very glad that a lot of people are actually interested on it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Do not forget to evaluate. Um, Noel, and, Noel and Michael already... Uh, sent in no? or chatted the link. So please do not forget to evaluate. Yes, so thank you po for, uh, no, <laughs> for joining our um, pictorial po sa documentations. You can turn off your cameras now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, Michael, na apatay ano later. We, we, still have, we still have another one later. You yes, think? Yes, so I do hope na magkita